Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. New observations of Interstellar Object 3i Atlas over the past few days from astronomers around the world have shown that shifting from a green color to a gold color, and this is very unusual. You don't often see gold colored comets, or in this case, an interstellar object. We do have C2025 K1 Atlas right now in our solar system, which about six weeks ago shifted to a golden hue as it moved into the constellation of Leo. That is quite interesting. And shortly after that occurred, it actually started to fragment apart. So is this indicative of a new chemical change and evolution of 3i Atlas occurring right now? And maybe is it going to break apart in the near future as it continues to head towards Jupiter? That's a good question. The evidence suggests that 3i Atlas was once probably a short period comet around its host star and it was heavily thermally processed from hundreds or even thousands of orbits around its host star. That's why it came in with a very dark red color with a bunch of organics after its long journey through interstellar space and then it suddenly erupted with a lot of activity started glowing green even a little blue at times and now with that final eruptive phase having come to an end it seems it's now going back to a dust dominated color but now it's glowing gold as it also will move into the constellation of leo over the next couple weeks, few weeks, and into 2026 as it approaches the planet of kings and royalty, Jupiter. So a lot of very interesting things happening right now with 3i Atlas, and we're going to get into all that and much more in today's video. So we'll begin with some of our first imagery of interstellar object 3i Atlas. Here we have three different views, our G-band, our R-band, our infrared band, going back to July 30. Remember, it's picked up on July 1st. We see in our green optical imagery here, it's not even really showing up that green. It's more of a yellow color. So it really wasn't glowing green when we first picked it up. In the red optical imagery, it's really glowing brightly red. And that's the color that we picked it up across all the different observations up till about the end of September when it switched to green. And here in our infrared, we see it also glowing quite brightly. Remember, it was very active even the first day that we picked it up. So it entered into our solar system after a long journey through cold, dark interstellar space and effectively immediately started becoming active once again, speaking to the fact that there was likely only a very thin crust of material surrounding it that caused it to suddenly erupt with activity. It didn't need to be deeply, deeply heated by our sun to all of a sudden start to become an oddball going from you know, red to green to now gold. And as we move closer in time to the present moment, here we have imagery of interstellar object 3i Atlas from August 27th. And here we see our ultraviolet, our green, our red, and our infrared imagery of this. You see that in the green band, it's starting to glow more green, but certainly very, very visible in the red band. And this was taken at 2.59 astronomical units. And this is important because there is a clear distinct zone at about 2.5 astronomical units where now water and H2O, water ice, all that can become much more active and that will start to influence the coma, the chemistry and more. So this is what it looked like right before it reached that water line. And then it was starting in September that we saw this shift in color from red to green for interstellar object 3i atlas. Before that, it was mostly CO2, cyanide, CN, and then also a lot of nickel, which is interesting. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. If we jump forward a lot up to November 26, after its perihelion, here we have imagery from Gemini north of 3i atlas, and you'll see that it has a little bit of this bluish tinge to it there, a little bit of a greenish color, but starting to transition to more of a gold color. So they caught this image back on November 26, right during that transition, it seems. We do have some other images from more recent where 3i Atlas is like a combination of green and gold, but seems to be becoming more gold day by day. So this was taken by Gemini North, a very high resolution look at 3i Atlas, its coma, its structure and everything. And that caught that transition from green to gold perfectly. 
Here we see 3i Atlas now taking on a striking gold color, this image taken on December 10th of this year by Alberto Quijano Vaniza. And this is very interesting because now we've seen three color shifts, red to green to gold, and this is occurring as it's moving into the constellation of Leo. It's having its closest approach to Earth in just four days as I record this right now on the 15th. That will be on the 19th. And also that is a new moon. So anyone that has the capability of getting optical imagery and telescope observations of 3i Atlas should definitely try to do so on the 19th because there's going to be perfect viewing conditions for it. You'll go out early in the morning and 3i Atlas will be there fairly high above the horizon. So most people, people should be able to get some good imagery if your weather cooperates. But this shift to gold isn't just a one-off observation by a single amateur astronomer or group. The key is to look at multiple observations across the board because that's how you get, get a sense of what's actually happening. And we have more imagery of it as well. So here is an image from the 14th of December, not as clearly colored as the last one, but you see that it doesn't have an obvious green color to it. And so this is a little bit more confirmation that that green color shift has come to an end. And then we have more imagery from today and look at that, it's starting to look gold. So this is almost a combination of green and gold here, but it looks a little bit more gold than green to me. This is by Tony Scarmato uh, out of Italy. And it just seems that we're seeing a profound color shift once again with 3i Atlas, which really speaks to its primordial history. So we have our pre-perihelion observations of 3i Atlas, and it was a very red dust dominated coma when we first picked it up. And it was stable despite increasing activity from 3i Atlas. Again, it hit that 2.5 astronomical unit waterline the beginning of September. So all the way from its first observations to the middle of September or so, it was very stable with its color, even though it was undergoing more and more sublimation and there was more gas and dust entering into space and that was plasma fine and such. Redder than previous interstellar visitors, Muamua was very, very dark. Borisov was pretty much like a typical comet that we see in our solar system. Interstellar object 3i Atlas, of course, being very bizarre. And then the other interesting things is that you had nickel emission appear very early without the presence of iron. We all know this if you've been tracking the story. Also a lot of cyanide and cyanogen gas soon emerged afterwards and this nickel production ramped up sharply much more than expected. And so all of these are clues as to what 3i Atlas likely experienced in the past. So I wanna be clear with this nickel emission, which we have very clear spectroscopic data for, and you see that there's basically no increases in the iron emission at the same time. This does not mean that the nucleus of interstellar object 3i Atlas has no iron. It means that if it does have iron in the nucleus, it's not reaching the coma because we're only observing the coma here, the gas, the dust, which then gets plasmified in space, right, ionized, we're only imaging that. So there's clearly some selective process here that's moving nickel from the nucleus into the coma that's not doing the same for iron. And the idea here is that this is actually carbonyls. So you have metal carbonyls, and you have, for example, iron carbonyl and nickel carbonyl, and what we know chemically is that nickel carbonyl is a bit more stable than iron carbonyl. And they also are both able to effectively volatilize at low temperatures. So they can sublimate pretty easily. But iron carbonyl isn't stable, so it's reactive. So it can react with things, let's say like water in the nucleus and not actually make it to the coma, whereas nickel carbonyl can do that and then it can break apart due to solar radiation and cause this increase in nickel in the coma, creating this spike in the spectroscopic data. So that is quite bizarre though, and it does speak to its primordial past. So based off of everything that we know, the most likely scenario for its past is that 3i Atlas was once a short period comet flying around its host star. We don't know what the star was, but that it passed by fairly close and it was therefore heavily thermally processed. It was constantly being hit 
by the energy of that star and any exotic compounds it had from its accretion outside its solar system would have burned off, leaving it just to basically be a nucleus, a rock with very little stuff left over. Then it got flung out and during its journey through interstellar space, it picked up a lot of exotic materials because you know when stars explode, they produce all the elements. So interstellar space is filled up with a lot of stuff, just a very low density. So that's where it probably picked up a lot of its water and a lot of its uh, unique compounds that we've seen in it. And then uh, a lot of organics, for example, these red colors are from the presence of organics in that dust. So it's very organic rich, like a trans Neptunian object or a D type asteroid. And those can create amino acids and those can create nucleotide base pairs. Really interesting stuff. We talked about the interstellar seed hypothesis for 3i Alice in a prior video. I'll link that in the video description if you want to learn more about that. But that's kind of a one time accumulation of material, unless 3i Alice, of course, zooms off again and does not break up and disintegrate. And then as it got close to our star, because it didn't have a big reservoir of these materials, it just had one single temporary kind of accumulation of them from its journey in interstellar space that would suddenly activate. It would then go from a red color to a green color as you have this huge amount of activity with 3i Atlas waking up. Again, its closest approach to the sun, it was receiving about 735 watts per square meter, whereas in interstellar space, it's 10 to negative seven, 10 to negative eight watts per square meter from the interstellar light flux and more. So a huge increase, like 10 orders of magnitude increase in the amount of energy that's receiving. And if that is the case and it's finally burned off and basically sublimated all that material, now it's shifting back to a dust dominated coma and that will make it glow more gold now because a lot of those organics too, which give it that red color, they're gonna have been evaporated off, volatilized and carried off with the dust because the organics will co uh, concentrate on the crust of this thing. So that's the most likely history of 3i Alice. We can't say definitively by any means, but that does seem to ring true and the observations line up with that and what we know chemically lines up with that. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with 3i Atlas now going forward because when we saw this shift to the gold color for K1 Atlas, a, a different comet from our solar system, it then started to fragment just immediately afterwards. And the last thing to talk about is 3i Atlas's closest approach to Earth, which is coming up in just four days on December 19th, and where 3i Atlas is in the night sky. So here we have our program Stellarium, and this is just set for today. I'll turn on the ecliptic plane here, and we are going to go forward in time to when 3i Atlas is actually out in the night sky, which will be early morning. So we're gonna go forward here to about three, let's make it four, a.m. in the morning and let's search for 3i Atlas and you see there it is. So it is moving from the constellation of Virgo, as you can see here, into the constellation of Leo. I just find that so interesting that we had K, uh, C2025 K1 Atlas move into the constellation of Leo. It started to glow gold, which is the color associated with kings and royalty and more. And that's in lines, lines are a golden color. And now we have 3i Atlas moving into the constellation of Leo and it's starting to glow gold. It's really quite striking. It's very, very interesting. But here we see it and if we go forward right here, we see that we have our moon for today. This is now the 16th and eventually we get the sun to rise. So if I turn on the atmosphere, you'll see, you can't see it anymore because it's during daytime now. But if we turn our atmosphere back off and we go forward two days here, to the 19th, you'll notice that the moon is with the sun. That is a new moon. You have the moon positioned with the sun. So you're not gonna have the moon out at night. So if you go back here, you'll see that 3i Atlas is well up in the sky. You're not gonna be competing with the light of the moon at all. And this is the closest approach of interstellar object 3i Atlas. It's been dimming a little bit post perihelion, but it is still quite bright overall. This is your best chance to get a really good view of what 3i Atlas looks like and what it's doing in the near future, because as we go towards January 
And then February, March of 2026, it's only gonna get dimmer and dimmer, almost certainly, as it gets closer to Jupiter and may even start to fragment apart. So I recommend if you have the capability to get out there and see, I'm gonna to try to do that myself. I'm actually gonna to try to do that tonight to see what I can image, but I don't have the best uh, telescopes yet. That's a plan in the future once I have the, the land and the space. But this is where 3 i Atlas is in between the constellation of Virgo and Leo. So now it does seem that interstellar object 3i Atlas is glowing a golden color, though we'll have to wait a few more days to really confirm that for more observations to come in. So I will keep you up to date on this channel if you subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been your host, Stefan Burns. Smash that thumbs up button to help the channel grow. And if you like the shirt that I'm wearing here, the interstellar Atlas, uh, shirt, then you can pick this up on my website. This is earthevolution.com slash store. We have a sale right now till the end of December. This is available for everyone in the United States. The code is thanks Stefan, all one word. So T-H-A-N-K-S-S-T-E-F-A-N. And here is the Interstellar Atlas, 3i Atlas cotton long sleeve shirt. It's super, super comfortable. Uh, you know, good sun protection, keeps you warm, but also not too warm. You can wear it even when it's nice out, for example. Really cool artwork on the back by my father, Lee Burns. You can see that right there. Um, and for example, we've just mixed up a new batch of herb coffee. This stuff is amazing, 50% coffee, but also 50% a blend of chicory root, dandelion root, and lion's mane mushroom. So it's really fantastic to drink in the morning because you get a little bit of that coffee buzz, but then you get a whole bunch of other goodies with the different roots, the dandelion, the chicory, and the lion's mane mushroom is super good for your brain, neuroplasticity, and learning and focus. This is a fantastic nootropic blend. So I recommend you pick some up if you are a coffee drinker. Uh, we'll ship that out to you very quickly. And this is the best stuff. So we use really good single origin, organic, shade grown, Peruvian coffee. Uh, it's just fantastic stuff. Spirituality is back in stock too. So if you've been waiting to pick this up, it is available. Very simple blend of chamomile, mugwort, passion flower, and purple lotus flower, all organic. Really great stuff, helps you to rest, relax, sleep, but also enhances your dreams. So as 3i Atlas is making its closest approach to the Earth, right, Earth is moving its orbit closer to 3i Atlas as it continues on. If there is some sort of energy connection between the two, which I think there is, many people do, we felt it, we know it, right? This is the night, like this time frame right now is the time to be drinking spirituality so you can maybe build that psychic connection to this interstellar visitor. Who knows what you'll pick up, right? Maybe it'll give you some awakenings within yourself or some interstellar information that's very unique. It's hard to say, but just you see all these little clues all around like K1 Atlas moves into Leo, it starts glowing gold. 3i Atlas is starting to move into Leo, it's glowing gold. There's more to this than meets the eye, right? The standard cosmological view of the universe is like not even 1% of what actually is happening in reality with consciousness, spirituality, and more. So this is really the T-Blend to pick up if you wanna to connect to all these things and more. That's available on the website. Wishing each and every single one of you well. Please take care of yourselves. I'll see you all in the next video.